In today's episode, we will talk about a different category of women because she was a Jew all of her life. And we know the enmity and hatred of Jews to the Muslims. So by default, she was a woman who hated the Prophet ﷺ and Islam. And not only that, the Prophet ﷺ in battle killed her ex-husband, then killed her current husband and her father and her brother, who were all hostile enemies to Islam and specifically to the Prophet ﷺ. They devoted their entire life for attacking the Prophet ﷺ personally and collaborating against Islam. So you can tell by this environment this woman grew up in, you can tell the amount of resentment and hate to Islam and to the Muslims. She is Safiya bint Huyay ibn Akhtab. She is from Banu and Nadir. And she is from the offspring of her great great grandfather. Harun ibn Imran, peace be upon him, the Prophet of Allah, the brother of Musa ibn Imran, peace be upon him, the Prophet of Allah as well. And she was married earlier to Salam ibn Mishkam, known as Abu Rafi', the Jew who was ordered to be assassinated by the Prophet ﷺ due to his abuse and harassment and plotting against Islam and the Muslims. Then she was married to Kinanah ibn Abil Haqiq, who was killed in the Battle of Khaybar. The Jews had a strong connection between the uh, one, one another, uh, uh, between themselves. So there were three or four tribes dominating the financial sector in Medina and in Arabia because they, as usual, it's part of their culture to deal in riba. It's part of their nature as a minority to dominate and control whatever they can control. And this is why they control the media. This is why they control the financial sector nowadays. So in the beginning, when the Prophet came to Medina alayhi salatu wasalam, he stretched his hand to them to coexist, to live in peace, not to cross the line against one another. And they signed treaties on that. Banu Qaynuqa'a were the first to break this treaty. When they attacked and sexually harassed a Muslim woman who was abiding by the hijab and then killed a Muslim man who tried to defend her in the gold market. And this is when the Prophet ﷺ made them leave their village and where they were sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam then few years later it was banu nadir whom when the prophet was there in the village trying to communicate with the leaders they plotted to assassinate the prophet by throwing a big rock from top of the building that he was 
sitting in the shade of it. Allah told him about their plotting, so he went back to Medina and then came back and also kicked them out. It seemed that it became a habit for the Jews to try and plot. If they fail, they can leave. And if not, they've succeeded. So the third attempt, and that was the third strike, when Banu Quraidha collaborated with the tribe of Ghatafan and the idol worshippers of Quraysh to besiege Medina in the Battle of the Trench, Ghazwatul Ahzab. And for a whole month, they intimidated the Muslims, showed their true intention to annihilate Islam and the Muslims while collaborating with the Jews of Bani Quraidha. And when Allah Azza wa Jal granted the Muslims victory and sent the blazing winds and his angels to disperse the enemy forces, then the Prophet ﷺ invaded Bani Quraidha and the ruling was to assassinate, to kill, to execute, which is a better word, all of their warriors and to enslave their women and children. Because if their plot were to succeed, the opposite would have happened exactly to the Muslims. So it is the punishment for what they had intended. Now, Banu Qaynuqa and Banu Nadir and some of those who managed to fled from Banu Quraidha all went to Khaybar, which was a town, a village, a fortress out of the outskirts of Medina. And they kept on plotting against Islam and the Muslims, led by a number of people, among them the father of Safiya ibn Huyay, bint Huyay ibn Akhtab, and her brother, and her uncle, and her husband. So once the Prophet ﷺ conducted the treaty in Hudaybiyah between the Muslims and the idol worshippers, and the treaty was there so that no one would attack one another, the Prophet ﷺ felt that this was the right time to go and get it over with the Jews once and for all. And this is not anti-Semitic, as they say, anti-Semitism. Because the Arabs are Semitic tribes. So these Jews are their cousins. So there's no racism, none whatsoever. Then what is it? It is simply as stated in the Quran, the divine book. And it's also stated in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that their hatred to us is caused by envy. Because the Messenger of Allah, they were anticipating and waiting for to follow and to fight the Arabs with, they were expecting him to be from the sons of Israel, a Jew. When they discovered that he was an Arab, they declared war and they clearly stated that we cannot follow him. Some of them acknowledged that he was a messenger of Allah and that he was a prophet of Allah, but only for the Arabs and not for the Jews. So they declared their enmity against Islam and the Muslims. In such an environment, Safiya was born and raised. When the Prophet ﷺ attacked 
Khaybar besieged it and conquered it without a fight, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ordered the execution of the enemies of Islam who were plotting beyond their ability and they went out of their way to harm the Isla Islam and the Muslims in any way they can. So they went and tried, but failed. And when Islam took hold of them, they were executed for their atrocities and for their plotting against Islam and the Muslims. Safiya fell in the share of Dihya al-Kalbi and that she was allocated to him as a slave girl. Some of the companions came to the Prophet ﷺ and said to him, O Prophet of Allah, Safiya is not befitting of Dihya. She is the daughter of the leader of the Jews. So she has attributes that do not allow her to be a normal slave and she cannot be except for a person like you. So the Prophet والسلام, proposed to her and gave her a choice and he asked her if she's willing to be set free and marry him or that he would set her free and she goes back to living with the Jews. So he actually gave her her freedom back if she was willing to take it. So when she entered upon the Prophet ﷺ, he said to her in the beginning, your father was among the strongest in enmity among the Jews towards me until Allah killed him. So, so she apologized and said, O Prophet of Allah, Allah says in the Quran, and no bearer of burdens will bear the burden of another. My father's burdens are not mine, so I'm not to be blamed. So the Prophet said to her, choose for yourself. If you wish, I will marry you and set you free. And if you choose Judaism, then I will set you free so you can go and catch up with your people. So she replied by saying, O Prophet of Allah, I have fallen in love with Islam and I believed in you before you called me to Islam. And I don't have any interest in Judaism. I don't have a father in it. I don't have a brother. I have nothing. And now you're giving me a choice between disbelief and Islam by Allah, Allah the Almighty, and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are more beloved to my heart than being set free and going back to my people. So the Prophet والسلام, kept her for, for himself. In the beginning, the companions did not know whether the Prophet is keeping her as a slave girl, a concubine, or a freed woman and marry her. So they said to themselves, if the Prophet والسلام, make, makes her wear the hijab, then definitely she is the mother of the believers. And soon she came out wearing the hijab, the Prophet ﷺ sitting next to her camel, putting his knee so that she could put her foot and climb over on top of that and then go and mount her camel. So they knew that the Prophet ﷺ took her as a wife. The Prophet ﷺ made a walima and his walima was very modest 
He collected dates and made a special plate of dates with ghee and some flour, which is known as hais. It's very sweet, very nice, very filling. And he ordered Anas ibn Malik to gather all the companions around so that they can feast on that. The Prophet والسلام, acknowledged that she was among those whom were born and raised to hate Islam and the Muslims. And therefore, he would not be intimate with her as a wife until she herself accepted him as a husband. And therefore, in the authentic hadith authenticated by Albani in Ibn Hibban, Safiya says, the Prophet والسلام, used to be the most hatred person to my heart. For he killed my husband, and I was a newlywed wife. And he killed my father, and he killed my own brother. So the Prophet kept on giving me justifications. And he would say, your father used to do this, and used to do that. And he used to talk to the tribes of the idol worshippers to come and attack us and tried to assassinate me a number of times. And he did this and he did that. She said, he kept on opening my eyes to the truth until all that hatred departed my heart and was replaced by extreme love to the Prophet ﷺ. Imagine the execution of her father husband and brother in one day. The execution or the killing of her ex-husband. What she has lost, her first home, Bani Nadir, and then her second home, Khaybar. Being captive and enslaved. All of these circumstances that are capable of not only depressing a person, a normal person, but rather demolishing a whole mountain. All of these negative feelings the Prophet ﷺ catered for. And Allah Azza wa Jal tested her with so many calamities only for her to come at the end as a winner, as a mother of the believers, as one of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ in this life and in paradise. What more honor could any person want? Therefore, there is always light at the end of the tunnel. And never think that calamities can break you down. Even when you are drowning and falling down, eventually, once you hit rock bottom, all what you can see is the top. So always have hope. Always believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. Always be confident that Allah Azza wa Jal will not leave you alone. After all these calamities and hardship, she became the wife of the Prophet the mother of all believers, and she set, the Prophet set his knee for her to climb and mount her camel. Among her attributes, may Allah be pleased with her, that she was from an honorable lineage. A Tirmidhi reported that Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that Safiya once heard Hafsa bint Umar, may Allah be pleased with them, said that she was the daughter of a Jew. And we know that 
Safiya, Hafsa, Aisha, they are not infallible. They are human beings. And sometimes in at times of jealousy, at times of anger, people say things that they may not intend or they may intend. This does not exempt them from being sinful, but after all, they're humans. And whenever they sin, they come back quickly to Allah Azza wa Jal and repent. Abu Dhar al-Ghafari, one of the first to embrace and accept Islam in Islam. So he was among the first to accept Islam. Was arguing with Bilal, the Mu'addin of the Prophet once, and he said to him, you are a son of a black woman. Of course, he's the son of a black woman. He's from Abyssinia. So what is wrong in that? I didn't say anything wrong. His mother is black. Yes, but it wasn't said as a fact. Rather, it was said to insult and hurt. So the Prophet, when he heard this, said, Abu Dhar, Abu Dhar, there is still pre-Islamic arrogance in you. So this is not something to be ignored. It's hurtful. And it's intended to insult. Likewise, Hafsa, a co-wife of Safiya, made a mistake. And she said that Safiya is the daughter of a Jew. And Safiya is and was the daughter of a Jew. Her father was Jewish. No one is to claim that he wasn't. And I am sort of astonished when reverts accept Islam and they feel shy to say that my father is a Christian or my mother is a Jew, or my ancestors are Hindus. It doesn't matter. What matters is you. If you're a Muslim, say, as Salman al-Farisi, may Allah be pleased with him, said, when they started, some of the companions, started to hint that he was a non-Arab, and that he was Persian, he said, Abil Islam ala abi li siwahu. He boasted with the fact that my father is Islam and I have no other father than it. So be proud of your conviction, not of your lineage. Nevertheless, it's hurtful when someone says it as an insult. So the prophet saw Sophia crying. And, she, and he asked her, why are you crying? She said, because Hafsa said, I am the son of a Jew. I am the daughter of a Jew. So the Prophet ﷺ made this statement for history. And he said to her, ﷺ, by Allah, you are the daughter of a prophet, referring to Harun. And your uncle is a prophet, referring to Musa. And you are married to a prophet, referring to himself. So how dare she speak like this and sees herself over you, where correctly you should see yourself over her because of all of these prophets in your family. Then he looked at Hafsa and said, Hafsa, Fear Allah. This statement should not have come out of you. So fear Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam knew that his co-wives were jealous of her because she was a woman of lineage. She was a woman of beauty and status. So they were envious, they were jealous. 
the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, when he got sick at the end of his life, his women all gathered around him to visit. So Safiyyah said, By Allah, O Prophet of Allah, I wish I was the one who was sick and not you. Now we often say this to our loved ones, though it is haram. It is not permissible to wish the illness or the calamity of a person to be on you instead of him, because this is not part of believing in the destiny of Allah and making dua against yourself is prohibited in Islam. But this was a word or a phrase that came out of her mouth. So the wives of the Prophet والسلام, started chit-chatting and gossiping. And as, you know, women talk, so they said, huh, huh, look, look what she's saying, it's, what a liar. So the Prophet saw them, والسلام, though he was sick, in pain and agony, he told them, go and swirl water in your mouths, meaning you've said something that polluted and tarnished your, the purity of your mouth. So they said, why would we do that, O Prophet of Allah? And he said, because of what you were chit-chatting about your friend, meaning Safiya. And by Allah, she's saying the truth. And this was a testimony for Safiya, may Allah be pleased with her. That by Allah, what she was saying was the truth. And she sincerely wanted the pain of the Prophet ﷺ to be on her rather than him feeling this pain and the suffering, which meant how sincere and truthful she was. She was a wise woman, as all the books of Sira say. She was a calm woman, and she was a righteous woman. She died on the uh, uh, 25th, or actually on the 52nd year of Hijrah at the time of Muawiyah, May Allah be pleased with her and pleased with Muawiyah. She was one of the mothers of the believers. And despite her upbringing, despite what was done to her own closest relatives, she loved the Prophet ﷺ from all of her heart. And the Prophet ﷺ made that as a fact. And he said that she is telling the truth. May Allah Azza wa be pleased upon Mother Safiya bint Huyay and all the mothers of the believers. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatul ilmi ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.